I'm Steve Adubato. This is 101 coming to you from the Agnes Ferris NJTV studio. It is our pleasure to introduce Jens Odenart, who is Division Vice President and General Manager of Work Market ADP, which is? ADP is the leading human capital management provider uh, in the U.S. and abroad, and Work Market was a recent acquisition that allows companies to manage their freelance and independent contractor populations. And ADP is a big supporter of our programming in the area of diversity and inclusion. Let's talk about that. Absolutely. So, so here's the thing. There's an initiative at ADP. It's called ADP Pride. What is it, and what does that have to do with diversity and inclusion? Sure. Uh, so I have the pleasure and honor to be the executive sponsor for ADP Pride. It is one of our nine business resource groups uh, that really sits within the Office of Diversity and Inclusion. You're the executive sponsor. Correct. Go ahead. Which means I lead the group. And so uh, diversity and inclusion is a key priority for ADP. We think it's important for organizations to have a focus on having a welcoming uh, culture for all. We think it's very important to win in the talent marketplace. And as a provider of HR services to our clients, we also believe that it is our role and duty to educate our clients on the importance of diversity and inclusion. And then for specifically ADP Pride, LGBTQ diversity and inclusion. So for our lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer and questioning associates and communities. You know, we're taping this program. We always disclose when we tape. You see in the corner of the screen on the 17th of September, uh, 2019. It'll be seen after that. But in fact, on the 11th of October is National Coming Out Day. Mm -hmm. Not only for that day, but for the entire month, ADP Pride does what? Uh, so we have a major campaign coming out in October. We actually have three campaigns throughout the year. There's a big one in June for Pride Month. Uh, October is a little bit more solemn. It's about National Coming Out Day and Spirit Day, where we will reach our 57,000 associates globally uh, with a message around those specific days. Um, National Coming Out Day is really about celebrating the visibility of the LGBTQ community. This kind of goes back to Harvey Milk. Come out, come out wherever you are. For those who don't know Harvey Milk, Google Harvey Milk, an iconic, important leader coming out of San Francisco, um, tragically killed by another member of that city council. Um, documentary on PBS. Check it out. It's important. Pick it up from there. Yeah. So it's kind of the most foundational level of LGBTQ activism, if you will, is just being visible, right? Um, that was kind of the, the ground floor for and the Harvard modern... And was one of the first to do that, excuse me, to yep. way Absolutely. before Absolutely. anyone else was doing it. Absolutely, very that. courageous. So it's the ground level and it's the foundation of the modern gay civil rights movement, this you, if you will. And it's a very courageous step that LGBTQ people, even in today's day and age, and especially in some areas in the world, still have to undertake, right? And we really have to come out every day but it's, it's a great uh, form of leadership as an LGBTQ person, and it's a great form of, of making yourself visible and kind of support those that maybe don't have it as easy to be out. So I think that's a very important uh, day to just remember the importance of being visible uh, as a community. And then Spirit Day, which is also in October, October 17th this year, is all around anti-bullying and really got started in the wake of a number of um, high school suicides because kids were being bullied for being different, for being LGBTQ. Uh, goes beyond LGBTQ, but it's really against bullying in the workplace, at school, in society. Are we doing you know, a good enough job or doing enough to protect folks in that community, in the LGBTQ community? We've made a ton of strides as a society, um, definitely here in the U.S. Um, there are still inequities based on the geographies in the U.S. And then internationally, it's a different story, country by country. There's definitely still um, uh, countries and regimes that are very repressive uh, for their LGBTQ And some more opening and accepting and embracing. Absolutely. So some of them are really getting there. I think uh, the role that corporations can play uh, by really making it very accepted for everyone. Well, let's, let's, let's go into this further. Beyond public policy, beyond laws. What I'm curious about is you've differentiated between inclusion and diversity. Mm -hmm. and, and for a lot of folks, man, it's all the same thing. You don't see it that way. I don't see it that way. Um, I think they're both very important and they kind of go hand in hand. Diversity is really the what. It's kind of what you can measure. Do we actually have diverse talent coming into the door and can we track that? Mm. Um, I think inclusion is much more nebulous. It's the how. How do we actually make sure that sustainably we can be a diverse workplace where uh, differences in perspectives are being celebrated and differences in backgrounds? And so that's much more cultural and it comes from the top 
comes from a leadership position where a company states as its value, we embrace everyone. We want everyone bring their full authentic self to the workplace. And we actually appreciate mm. the, those differences in perspective. It's a, it's a value, it's a cultural value, um, which is much harder to attain than just the metrics of diversity, but they do go hand in hand. Sure, you know, there are some people, I'm sure are watching right now, and I've heard some people say this, um, why, why do people need to self-identify in the workplace? Mm -hmm. What's the difference? Nobody asks anybody else, but it's a lot more complicated than that. And it's easy for someone who is straight, if you will, to say something like that, as opposed to someone who's been dealing with a whole range of issues impacting his or her life. Yeah, I think there's, there's really two levels of self-identification. It's about when you show up and you have conversations. Or excuse me, their life as well. Yeah, absolutely. To be more inclusive, good, yeah, I'm sorry. That's a great pronoun. Um, it's about when you show up and you have conversations with people, it's just being able to be yourself, right? Um, a lot of people focus on their time management, but it's also about energy management. And it takes a lot of energy for people to pretend to be someone they're not when they're in the workplace. So I think that's one important thing, why we should allow everyone to be who they are and identify as such in the workplace. They're more productive as well? Absolutely. Um, and they thrive and they become more successful if they can be their full selves. I think at a kind of macro level, an aggregate level, it's also about a community. And you know, people say it's kind of this truism, but um, you don't count unless you're counted. You don't count unless, unless you're counted. counted. And so a lot of companies track um, a wide range of statistics around their minorities. What's very interesting specifically around the LGBTQ community is that there's actually not that many companies that allow their employees to self-identify. And a lot of that is because there is no federal protection for LGBTQ employees. So the U.S. compared to the rest of the world, there are no legal protections. That's correct. So the Civil from Rights workplace. Act. The Civil Go Rights ahead. Act does not include protection for LGBTQ employees. Is that the Civil so, Rights Act of 1964? Correct, yes. Yeah. So in almost 30 states, you can be legally fired for being LGBTQ. You can also get evicted. So there's, even beyond the workplace, there is protections that are lacking. And so it's a very sensitive thing to actually track someone's LGBTQ status if they can legally get fired. Now, mm -hmm. a lot of companies have their own non-discrimination policies that prevail the local laws. At a company like ADP, you cannot get fired based on your gender identity. But it's company by company. Sexual orientation. But it's company by company. And so... Not as, by statute. Not by statute. And so as I mentioned before, we, um, as an HR company, we feel it's our duty to educate yeah. the market there. And so we actually now have products that our clients can use that allow them to track LGBTQ yeah. self-identification. Yeah, and so um, I, we appreciate what you are doing, what your colleagues are doing, um, diversity, inclusion in the workplace, protecting people, making people feel very comfortable being who they are, fully who they are. Yep. Very well said. Thank you, Jens. Thank you very much, Steve. I'm Steve Adubato. We'll be right back right after this. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 30 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by the Northward Center, the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, PSENG, TD Bank, MD Advantage Insurance Company of New Jersey, Berkeley College, and by the Fidelco Group. Promotional support provided by NJ.com and AM970, The Answer. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.